बरकुले सर स्टार्ट करू शकतो ओके ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ अवर सुंदरराव मोरे आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड सायन्स कॉलेज पोलादपूर ऑनरेबल प्रिन्सिपल व्हाइस प्रिन्सिपल प्रोफेसर अँड दि स्टुडंट फ्रॉम ऑल कॉलेजेस अँड टुडेज रिसोर्स पर्सन डॉक्टर गवाळे सर वेलकम वन्स अगेन टुडे इज दि थर्ड सेशन ऑफ दि वेब सिरीज फॉर दि एक्झामिनेशन प्रिपरेशन फॉर दि थर्ड इयर स्टुडंट अँड फॉर दॅट Uh, today we have uh, dr uh, sanjay gawale sir who is in charge principal of uh, dbj college chipun and uh, he has uh, worked of, as a vice principal for 11 years and uh, he is head of the chemistry department as well as he is coordinator for msc course also uh, for more than 32 years he has worked as associate ncc officer and uh, he has also completed two minor research projects which are which were funded by ugc and university of mumbai then dr gawale sir worked as a principal investigator for government research projects he has also worked as a paper setter examiner then moderator and chief conductor for various ug and pg level examinations in chemistry so from his contribution in various fields we come to know that a versatile and a dynamic personality is today with us who is having more than 36 years of teaching experience in inorganic chemistry so once again i welcome sir and request you to guide our students please sir thank you ma'am thank you so uh, let me start first of all i welcome all the students and uh, the teaching faculties those are attending this session and uh, i extend my thanks to the sundar rao more college the principal and the authority for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk to our students and uh, share my thoughts on the inorganic chemistry and uh, coming fifth sem examination uh, dear students see uh, the examination which you are going to appear for is the examination coming after a two years period of covid covid 19 and uh, uh, we know during that period you were appearing for the online examinations and uh, most of the questions are the mcq type questions and uh, due to which uh, most of students they have uh, seen just examination is uh, like uh, solving the mcqs giving the answers to the a uh, one mark questions or single sentence questions and uh, it was different from the examination which you are going to appear now in fifth semester the coming examination you will have a descriptive type of question paper as it was there before the covid 19 see inorganic chemistry is one of the paper in chemistry the second paper and uh, it is for 100 marks and uh, for fifth semester there four units are there in the syllabus and these four units they are uh, that is the questions on all these four units are set there in the uh, question papers now uh, coming question papers for same fifth same five now see first of all uh, uh, we will see the topics which are there in the four different units then we will come to the nature of the question paper so see first of all the first unit of our syllabus is the molecular symmetry and chemical bonding molecular symmetry and chemical bonding in this topic we are going to see first of all what is symmetry then various examples of symmetry the symmetry which we found in the nature as well as symmetry we found in 
chemical structures, molecular structures, and the use of the symmetry. What are the uh, points uh, there in the symmetry that we are studying in this topic? Then uh, in this, the half part of this unit is the molecular orbital theory applied to heteronuclear diatomic molecules as well as a polyatomic species. Now here, uh, just I remind you that uh, you have studied in SYBSC application of this molecular orbital theory to homonuclear diatomic molecule. The simple molecules where there are both the atoms of that molecule that belongs to the same element. For example, a molecule of hydrogen, molecule of helium, uh, up to neon, the uh, various molecules, how their bonding be explained by molecular orbital theory that we have seen. And uh, uh, this year, we are seeing this uh, heteronuclear diatomic molecule, that is the diatomic molecule, but both the atoms, they belong to different elements. And so heteronuclear diatomic molecules. Now, uh, after that, the polyatomic species are there, application of MOT to that. And uh, in polyatomic molecules, there, first of all, a uh, H3 plus ion, a triatomic uh, hydrogen ion, cation, then a ammonia molecule, and uh, a uh, beryllium dihydride, a water molecule. These molecules uh, you have studied in the, uh, this topic, application of molecular orbital theory to that. Then this is the first unit. Second unit is the solid state chemistry. Now here also, it is just extension to what we have studied in SYBSC. In SYBSC, we have seen uh, a structure, solid structures. And here, the solid state chemistry, the first part of that is the structures of solids. Here we are studying uh, the solids, uh, structures of that. And uh, in this, we, uh, we are studying uh, how the solids, they are in crystalline and amorphous form. Then especially in each crystalline form, how they are uh, classified into 14 bravais lattices. The 14 bravais lattices are further divided into seven systems, crystal systems. And that seven crystal systems, those are having different type of crystal lattices. Here we study what is lattice, what is crystal lattice? Then what is a unit cell? Here the unit cell parameters, that is the ages of the unit cell, then uh, angles formed by the ages, that angles and uh, together which we call a unit cell parameter or unit cell constants that we study here. Here in this topic, we study that uh, what is the atomic packing factor for three types of crystal lattices. One is the simple cubic, second one is the body-centered cubic, and third one is the face-centered cubic. Previously, that hexagonal closed pack HCP structure was there, but uh, the syllabus which we are studying, you are studying, which uh, is implemented from 2018. In this, the simple cubic, body-centered cubic, and face-centered cubic, these three crystal lattices are there. Uh, where uh, you have studied the to derive the atomic packing factor for uh, these structures. If required, we will see it in detail. Now, uh, that we have seen in the structures of solid. The second part of that is the superconductivity. In this topic, we have seen that uh, how Kamarlingam or Linga Ones has uh, discovered superconductivity. He was studying on what is the effect of decreasing temperature on the resistance of the material. That is conductivity, which is reciprocal to the uh, resistivity. That is the resistance and conductance, they are reciprocal of one another. And if the temperature is reduced, the conductor can reduce its resistance. So it can conduct more or the conductance value is increased. Kamerlinger Ones was studying that. 
and uh, uh, especially he was studying uh, lower temperatures at lower temperatures what is happening to the resistance and uh, at a one uh, point he got that at only 4.15 kelvin the resistance of mercury is become zero and when it is zero it indicate the conductance is infinite that is very high huge conductance and that is the point when the superconductivity was discovered and uh, that is the superconductivity in this superconductivity topic we are studying uh, what is superconductor what are the characteristics of that superconductor and what are the different materials can be used as a superconductor that is the different types of superconductors the conventional one the uh, other uh, high temperature superconductors as well as the uh, various types of superconductors there we are studying after that the third unit is the chemistry of inner transition element now in this inner transition element chemistry of inner transition element here we have studied the uh, 4a block elements and uh, that is the inner transition element in lower classes previous classes uh, we have studied the s block element then the p block element as well as d block element now these are the f block element which we call inner transition element in which its last three orbitals that is the uh, valence cell orbital then its uh, penultimate orbital and pre penultimate orbital three orbitals are incompletely filled and the electrons are filled in pre penultimate orbital as atomic number increases and so we call them as a inner transition element we are going to study that the inner transition element and in this inner transition element there are two series one is the lanthanide series actually uh, it should be called lanthanon series the lanthanon series and uh, as well as the actinon series we are going to study lanthanon in detail and uh, that lanthanon series with respect to uh, what is the position of this lanthanons in the periodic table that we know it is in the third b group and sixth period of the periodic table the lanthanon series it comes after the that of the lanthanum in third b group the lanthanum atomic number 57 along with lanthanum there other 14 elements reside it is very difficult to show all 15 elements in the single block a single place and so it is shown below the uh, periodic table in two lines one is the lanthanon series and another one is the actinon series lanthanons are the 4a block and actinons are the 5a block in lanthanon 4a orbital is preferentially filled and in actinon 5a orbital is preferentially filled now this lanthanons we are going to study in detail with respect to its electronic configuration uh, it is having two types of electronic configurations actually the observed electronic configuration as well as the ideal electronic configuration as per the rule uh, what would be the ideal electronic configuration that is there and one more is the observed electronic configuration what happened the electron in 5d orbital electron in 5d orbital it is uh, get shifted to the 4f and the uh, actual practical electronic configuration is there become and uh, we will see that Uh, then next the properties of lanthanides here uh, lanthanides or lanthanons we are going uh, uh, we have seen oxidation states of the lanthanons there the plus 3 oxidation uh, plus 3 is the dominant oxidation state the reason behind that the reduction of lanthanon to plus 2 oxidation state is unfavorable normally unfavorable and oxidation of lanthanon to plus 4 oxidation state that is also unfavorable and the plus 3 oxidation state from plus 4 by reduction or plus 3 from plus 2 by oxidation 
both these reactions are favorable and so there is a dominance of plus 3 oxidation state in the lanthanon these lanthanons which show the plus 3 oxidation state as a dominant various properties are there that show in plus 3 oxidation state and as it is dominant that properties are dominant now see one more uh, interesting phenomenon is happened there with this lanthanon and that is the lanthanon contraction it is called also called as a lanthanide contraction now this lanthanide contraction is uh, very very important as far as lanthanons are concerned because it is having effect on lanthanon itself it is having effect on post lanthanon element as well as the element which come before lanthanon or lanthanide that is the yttrium on yttrium also it has effect as a uh, due to the lanthanide contraction and uh, uh, that we know that uh, yttrium is found as a practical member of the lanthanide this is due to the lanthanide contraction as uh, now see as in the group as we pass down the group below yttrium lanthanum is there and lanthanon series is there so as we pass down the group atomic size increases but as we go in the group of the lanthanide series there atomic size decreases and the reason behind that is as atomic number increases the nuclear charge increases but the addition of electron is takes place in pre penultimate orbital only in group we see that as the atomic number increases the electron goes to newer and newer orbital a new quantum level is there then new orbitals are there but here in lanthanide what happened as atomic number increases the addition of electron takes place in one and the same that pre penultimate orbital so nuclear charge is increasing but addition of electron is takes place in last but second orbital pre penultimate orbital and so the contraction is there this gradual decrease in the size of lanthanon with increasing atomic number is called a lanthanide contraction so this is the reason of lanthanide contraction cause of lanthanide contraction and it has effect on that of the uh, preceding element like yttrium it has effect on post lanthanide element that is the uh, niobium tantalum uh, and zir zirconium and uh, that elements there in case of that there a uh, their sizes are become uh, become same that is zirconium hafnium niobium tantalum molybdenum tungsten technetium rhenium and as such they are having similar sizes and they are having uh, uh, similar properties they are become chemical twins they are called chemical twins so this is the effect some other effects are also there due to the lanthanon contraction as uh, on lanthanide itself uh, their sizes are gradually decreases and a cumulative effect is there but if we will take successive elements that is cerium praseodymium neodymium promethium samarium europium gadolinium terbium dysprosium holmium erbium thulium pytobium lutetium if we will take these element and if we will take successive two elements then it uh, there is very very less change in their size and so they are having nearly similar property and become they are very difficult to separate from one another and it is said that it is as difficult as separation of a isotope but due to the little change in some physical property it reflects in the uh, basicity of that basicity of the their compound and they can be separated by using certain technique okay uh, we are talking about the points in this that is this unit 3 it has study of this lanthanon so uh, this is there then the other property is magnetic property of the lanthanides here <coughs> sorry the magnetic property of the lanthanide are different than that of the transition element the reason is 
in case of transition element the d orbitals are sometimes protruded out through the valence s orbital and it comes in contact with the external species external chemical species electrical species and due to which its orbital motion is quenched out but in case of lanthanum as such the orbitals where the electrons are there that is the 4f orbital it is well shielded inside the 5 and 6 quantum level and so it is not get quenched up or not get uh, changed by external electrical field and due to which in case of lanthanide its magnetic moments are due to the spin as well as orbital motion of the electron and it is said that before half field of the lanthanide before half field of the lanthanide this uh, orbital motion and spin motion the magnetic moment caused by both both the components they work together and uh, sorry uh, up to half field it is work opposite and after half field that is when it is become 4f7 electronic configuration gadolinium onward the uh, orbital momentum the magnetic momentum due to orbital motion and magnetic momentum due to spin motion that work together and so the magnetic moments are very high and so the magnetic moments of some of the elements like dysprosium holmium erbium it is quite high as compared to other elements like that of the uh, praseodymium neodymium where there the number of electrons uh, unpaired electrons are similar but here in case of these elements there the orbital momentum and spin momentum work together and so the very high magnetic moments are there and so if you will plot a graph of magnetic momentum or a bohr magneton the momentum against atomic number the graph is a double hump curve it is a double hump curve that is up to half field electronic configuration of the lanthanum a small hump is there and after the half field it is a large hump is there and uh, this is if we consider both the components but like a transition element if we um, allow here the spin only formula and take the magnetic moments then the highest magnetic moment is for gadolinium but rest of the elements they won't show the magnetic moment on that lines as uh, that of the transition element so it is different in case of lanthanide so the in short in case of transition element the magnetic moments can be calculated by spin only formula by considering spin momentum only so from the number of unpaired electrons or from the uh, that of the spin momentum we can calculate the magnetic moment of transition element but in case of lanthanum we have to consider that mu s uh, we have to consider that spin momentum as well as orbital momentum and hence instead of the formula mu is equal to under root n into uh, n plus 2 the formula is mu sl is equal to under root 4s into s plus 1 plus l into l plus 1 so uh, it is due to the contribution of both the components that is the spin momentum and orbital momentum so that is the difference there then about absorption spectra the absorption spectra of trans, uh, this inner transition element or lanthanum they are very sharp they are as sharp as the emission spectra the reason is again same that the electrons or valence electrons that are filled in the well shielded 4f orbital the pre penultimate orbital due to which a any change due to the external component that is due to the ligand or coordinating group a very little change is there and uh, the main pattern or the main uh, spectra won't get change by changing the coordinating 
group or the ligand. Again, a complex forming ability of the lanthanide. The lanthanides hardly forming complexes, hardly forming with the ligands having nitrogen as a donor atom. They are forming complexes with either a chelating group or where their oxygen or fluorine is a donor atoms. And the ligands are ionic species. This is the reason is same. The electrons are well buried inside the uh, 5 and 6 quantum level that is in 4F. So this is about the lanthanide. Then uh, 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 we have seen the applications of the lanthanide where the lanthanides are used. Their commercial use, their nuclear use, their uh, various uses of the lanthanide, the applications of that. So this is the third unit in uh, your study, the inner transition element, lanthanide series. Then next is uh, the fourth unit. Fourth unit is a some selected topics in inorganic chemistry. Now see, in this, there are three subtopics. The first one is chemistry in non-aqueous solvents. Now see, up to TYBSC, that is in SYBSC and previous classes, you have studied the chemistry in solution wherever you have studied. It is with respect to water. So water is the main solvent we have considered. And all the reaction, most of the general reactions we have studied, they are with respect to water as a solvent. And in this topic here, we are studying non-aqueous solvent. If the solvents are other than water, what will happen that we are studying here? In, the, in this topic, the beginning of the topic is water is a, uh, with the information that water is a universal solvent. So what makes water universal solvent? Water is a universal solvent because this water is uh, having a long liquid range. If you see the liquid range of water, it is 100 Celsius from 0 Celsius to 100 Celsius water exists in liquid state. But as compared to that, if you will take uh, the other solvents like that of the ammonia or a liquid sulfur dioxide or that of the hydrofluoric acid or dinitrogen tetraoxide, the liquid range is small in that case. Suppose for uh, we have taken that for ammonia. In case of ammonia, 196 Kelvin ammonia become melt and uh, it is in a liquid state. And it boils at 239.5. See how small range is. Liquid sulfur dioxide, its range is 198 Kelvin to 252.9. In hydrofluoric acid, 183.6 to 292.5. Here the range is somewhat larger, but it is very, very uh, hazardous and uh, corrosive. Uh, to handle. So as compared to this, water is having long liquid range, 100 Celsius the liquid range is there and it is easy to handle, it is safe to handle and the third reason is plenty of water is available on earth. We know nearly three-fourths of the earth's surface is covered by water. So uh, that is there. Again, water is dissolving uh, nearly all or most of the ionic compounds, most of the ionic compounds, except some like a barium sulfate, calcium chloride, except some, most of the ionic salts are soluble in water. Due to this reason, water is a universal solvent. Again, water is acting as a solvent by uh, a specific way. Water acts as a solvent and uh, uh, that behavior of the water when it acts as a solvent is a typical one. And if a other solvent is behaving like that, suppose uh, we know that uh, how water behaves. Suppose a 
uh, crystal of sodium chloride we have taken in water crystal of sodium chloride we have taken in water and uh, when it comes in water immediately water molecules orient around the ions in that crystal or crystal lattice around the sodium ion water molecules get orient in such a way that the oxygen side is towards it and it is attracting that sodium ion and around the chloride there the water molecules orient from hydrogen side the positive end of that molecule and they try to attract it ultimately it takes out that ions and so further a uh, hydrated sodium ion hydrated chloride ion they become separate from the crystal and in this way the dissolution of that crystal takes place so this is the behavior of water and this behavior if it is observed in any non aqueous solvent we used to say it is water like solvent it is water like solvent in this chapter we are going to study the or you have studied the solvents like ammonia and uh, uh, that of the dinitrogen tetraoxide and where uh, these two solvents we are comparing here how they behave as a solvent with water and uh, uh, various reactions we are uh, studying here the reactions like acid base reactions that are takes place in this non aqueous solvent uh, we know uh, you might have studied in sybsc that what is acid what is base as per arrhenius theory as per bronsted lowry theory as per lewis theory and uh, as per uzanovich theory as per hard and soft acid base theory here the acid base concept we are studying in these different solvents where the solvent which is giving out cation is a acid a solvent which is giving out anion is a base and likewise so the acid base reactions are studied here simply it can be said with this theory if we take most of the reactions which we are studying they may become acid base reactions because uh, in lewis theory in lewis theory also the species which is giving electron is a base and the species which accept electron is an acid so uh, in this way acid base reactions we are studying here in the non aqueous solvent acid base reactions then second one is the redox type of reaction how a particular substance is behave as a oxidizing agent it itself undergo reduction but it oxidizes other it is a oxidizing agent or how a particular substance can behave as a reducing agent it itself undergo oxidation but it reduces other such type of redox reactions we are studying here in non aqueous solvent so acid base reaction ox, uh, redox reaction then a, a precipitation reaction precipitation if there are two substances are capable of reacting together and forming a insoluble substance we say it is a precipitation and that precipitation reaction can be studied precipitation reaction can be studied in non aqueous solvent so that are studied there and after the precipitation then next is the complex formation reaction complex formation reaction and finally the uh, solvolysis reaction the reaction where a solute and solvent react together are the solvolysis if such reactions happen in water we used to call them as a hydrolysis if such reactions takes place in ammonia we used to call ammonolysis so these five reactions are there but mostly the stress is on stress is on the acid base reaction and redox reaction that precipitation complex formation solvolysis they are also there so this is the non aqueous solvent in non aqueous solvent we are uh, studying these things the various 
reactions in non aqueous solvent after that the next is the comparative chemistry of 16 group element in the periodic table various groups of the elements we have studied in previous classes now here the group 16 element we know that in previous description of the periodic table there were eight groups of the metal seven groups of the non metal and one zero group was there actually in periodic table 18 columns are there but out of 18 column eight metal seven non metal and one noble gases zero group that is 15 and 1 16 groups were there but columns were 18 because one of the eighth group eighth b group it has three columns so though 18 columns were there we have 16 groups there and uh, like this uh, the description of that uh, periodic table was your study <coughs> but nowadays as per uh, iupsc nomenclature the description of periodic table is taken as the 18 columns are considered as a 18 groups and so the uh, first group is a uh, alkali metal second one alkaline earth metal in this way the uh, each group is taken as a separate group of the periodic table and likewise the 16 group is the oxygen family where there the first element is the oxygen the elements are oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and polonium they are there in the 16 group we are going to study comparative chemistry of this oxygen family elements oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium polonium these elements so as usual as we have studied various groups of the element here first of all we are going to study what the, these elements are what are their uh, atomic numbers and then their physical properties trends in the physical properties that we are studying here that is uh, oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and polonium their electronic configurations as it is ns2 np4 a general electronic configuration of these element uh, then the trends in physical properties as atomic sizes as usual we know as we pass down the group atomic sizes of these elements increases then ionization energy their ionization energy decreases down the group as size increases it is easy to remove the outermost electron from the neutral atom to make it become unipositive cation then uh, the electronegativity we know at the top of the group electronegativity is highest in that particular group and the electronegativity decreases down the group and with this the electropositivity is electropositivity normally increases down the group in this group is it, it is observed that the electropositive or metallic character is increases down the group oxygen sulfur are the non metal selenium tellurium are metalloid or semi metals and polonium is a pure metal so in this way a metallic character changes down the group likewise the melting point and boiling points are then conductivity of these elements then oxidation states also here also uh, the inert pair effect is observed that is the removal of electrons from p is easy but to remove the electron from field s orbital is somewhat reluctant we used to say it as a inert pair effect then uh, so the study of these elements we are doing here in the 16 group elements then uh, we are going to study the allotropy in these element what is allotropy allotropy is suppose some elements they are having the some atoms of the same element but their physical properties are different we used to call them as a 
allotrope as a uh, we can say a oxygen and uh, a, a ozone the allotropy of the oxygen is uh, or allotropy in oxygen is there then uh, in case of sulfur sulfur is having allotropes as a rhombic or the alpha sulfur then monoclinic or the beta sulfur the gamma sulfur a plastic or uh, that particular gamma sulfur it is there a colloidal sulfur a angels or epsilon sulfur so in this way the different physical states of the sulfur are there the, so uh, we study allotropy here and uh, after that the chemical properties of this element how the uh, chemical properties of this element uh, are there uh, that we are studied in this uh, topic and uh, the next is the synthesis of sulfuric acid synthesis of sulfuric acid in our syllabus we are uh, studying here the synthesis of sulfuric acid by contact process so there is a one flow sheet diagram how the sulfur and oxygen that comes there the sulfur is become uh, oxidized and uh, uh, it goes through the uh, burner to a dust purifier where there is steam of water is flown down to clean that gases or clean that sulfur dioxide then in the dryer it is uh, going up in that chamber where there a concentrated sulfuric acid is sprayed from top then it goes to the next chamber where there a arsenic purifier is and this arsenic purifier it absorbs if any impurity is there then it goes to the cotrel precipitator where there the impurities are separated and uh, it goes to then filter box through the filter box it get filtered and a pure uh, sulfur oxide it goes further through the tindall box where it is checked whether it is pure or uh, is there any impurity and it then goes to the heat exchanger and from the heat exchanger it goes to the converter and in the converter it forms the become a uh, sulfur trioxide and that goes to the absorber where it is mixed with the concentrated sulfuric acid that is the 98% sulfuric acid it becomes a oleum and that oleum is further collected and uh, that is a uh, sulfuric acid a high concentrated sulfuric acid that is further uh, diluted and given in a particular required percentage of it so in this way a uh, flow sheet diagram for the contact process is there and uh, uh, here the main role is of the converter in the uh, this flow sheet diagram main role is of converter and the uh, in the contact process the converter which is used it has uh, a catalyst in the iron tubes and where there a sulfur dioxide is uh, mixed with oxygen and it is become a sulfur trioxide in presence of catalyst it is get converted and it goes to the heat exchanger and uh, from the heat exchanger it is uh, become collected in the uh, cooled form as a sulfur trioxide and it is sent to the absorber where it converts to the sulfuric acid so in this way in this topic uh, we have studied the elements of 16th group the oxygen family elements and uh, next one is the comparative chemistry of 17 group element now as we have seen 16 group is a oxygen family this 17 group is the halogen family halogen family elements and these halogen family elements are the fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and astatine the atomic numbers are 9 fluorine 17 chlorine 35 bromine 53 iodine 
and 85 ASTA time. Their general electronic configuration is NS to NP5. Seven electrons are there in the valence cell. And so it requires only one electron to complete its octet. And normally it takes that one electron and become uninegative anion, a fluoride ion, chloride ion, bromide ion, iodide ion in this way. Now here also we are or we have studied these elements with respect to their physical property and the trends in their physical property. Now the physical state of these elements, I think except iodine, all of them, they are in the gaseous state. Uh, that bromine exists as a liquid, but actually they are in gaseous state. Iodine exists as a solid. Now they are uh, showing the dark colors. A fluorine is yellowish green, bromine is uh, reddish brown, iodine is somewhat brown, but violet is the color. And uh, in this way, these elements are here. In this element, the electronegativity decreases down the group from fluorine to that of the uh, iodine. Fluorine, its electronegativity is four on the uh, polling scale. Chlorine is three, that bromine is 2.85. In this way, it decreases down the group and other properties are also. In this chapter here, we are studying the oxidation states of these elements. These elements, they are having negative oxidation state, but uh, except fluorine, the rest of the elements, they show somewhere positive oxidation state in the oxy acids. Chlorine cannot show any plus one oxidation state. A chlorine can show that hypohalous, that is hypochlorous acid. So the oxy acids, which are from, from this, as chlorine can show plus one oxidation state in HClO, actually it is HOCl. Then next one is the chlorous acid, that is HOClO. Then chloric acid, HOClO2. Actually, we used to call HClO3, but it is HOClO2. And per chloric acid, this is the uh, final stage of adding oxygen, and it is HOClO3, HClO4 actually, per chloric acid, and which is highest known protonic acid, the per chloric acid. So, uh, in this way, these elements are, if you will see the thermal stability of these elements, there the hypochlorous acid is less stable than chlorous acid. It is less stable than chloric acid. It is less stable than perchloric acid. So as oxidation state increases, oxidation state of halogen, or from hypohalous to perhalic, the thermal stability increases. And about their oxidizing property, about their oxidizing property, one more thing, their uh, Acidic strength is in also increases. Acidic strength is also increases. Hypohalous to halous, halous to helic, and helic to perhelic. But their oxidizing property is uh, decreases down the this group of hypohalous, halous, helic, perhelic. Now, uh, in short, uh, together I'll tell the thermal stability is increases. Actually, it is poor in hypohalous that increases in halus, then increases in helic, and again increases in per helic. Then acid strength, it is also uh, weak or less in halus, uh, that hypohalous, then halus, then helic and per helic, it increases. And oxidizing power, it is reverse. It is decreases from hypohalous to per helic. So, uh, this is about the compounds of halogen. These oxy acids are there. We, are, we have studied these oxy acid with respect to valence cell electron pair repulsion theory, VS EPR theory. That is, depending on number of pairs of electron around the central atom, what would be the shape or structure of that? 
to minimize the repulsion between these electron pairs they orient in such a way that the repulsions become less and so if only two pairs are there it is linear if uh, three pairs are there one bond pair and three lone pair it is uh, typical linear uh, actually the central atom is undergoing the sp3 hybridization and so the various shapes of that ions are oxy acid and ions then one more type of compounds are here and that are the interhalogen compound now interhalogen compounds are formed by combination of two halogen atoms there very less electronegativity difference is there between them and uh, some uh, attraction is there and uh, it forms the compounds covalently bonded compound the interhalogen compound but they are having weak bonds with hydrogen and so they are more reactive than the normal acid and uh, various properties of the interhalogen compounds are there then uh, polyhalides are there as a uh, ki3 is there that is i3 minus a halide ion so in this way in 17 group element we are going to study these element and their compound as interhalogen compound and oxy acids of them and uh, these compounds we are studying here so this is the review of all the topics which we have studied in the syllabus of fifth semester one more thing is remain that in inner transition element there the ion exchange method and uh, solvent extraction method is there which is applied by which the lanthanides are separated lanthanides are separated so uh, see both these methods uh, with respect to the role of complexing agent in that which enhances the separation and uh, the uh, occurrence of these lanthanides and their extraction a simple processes are there so uh, uh, without wasting time we will come to the uh, nature of the question paper so all this is there which you have studied in the fifth semester and uh, now i'll tell you the uh, nature of the question paper see the question paper is for 100 marks and in this there are five questions and the first question is on unit 1 and there are uh, six questions out of six four are expected to be solved so one and half questions are given you have to solve one that is out of six you have to solve four each question is for five marks and the questions are descriptive as just uh, i'll tell you see as Uh, give an account of the following with suitable examples one is the inversion center and second one is the identity these are the two symmetry elements so uh, you give the account of that with suitable example how inversion center is there take a suitable example how inversion center is shown may be taken hydrogen molecule may be taken any square planar uh, complex or may be taken any uh, compound where there you can show this uh trans dichloroethylene where their inversion center can be shown then next is the identity identity is present in all the uh, types of molecules okay this type of question and each question is for five marks question number 1 six questions four questions to be solved each question is for five marks then second question on unit 2 six questions each question is for five marks solve four questions then question number 3 it is on unit number 3 questions are asked on unit number 3 each question is for five marks you have to solve any four there may a question with a and b three and two marks that is again it is for five marks so each question is for five marks such six question will be given you have to solve four then uh, question number 4 this question number 4 as usual it is on unit number 4 and the questions again for five marks six questions will be given you have to solve the four questions so in this way on four units four questions are there each question is for that particular unit and last one is the fifth question 
this fifth question is common in all the four units but there also separation see in the fifth question there is a b c and d a is for unit 1 may be uh, true or false b is for unit 2 may be mcq choose the correct option c is for unit 3 may be uh, choose the correct option mcq and d is for unit 4 and uh, it may be match the columns so in this way a descriptive questions are asked in this exam you have to write the answers to this descriptive question in this way see simply suppose a uh, question is asked as uh, uh, explain the uh, proper rotation axis uh, in the molecular symmetry the question is uh, explain the proper rotation axis now first of all uh, few sentences should be there introductory so uh, what is proper rotation axis you uh, start there the uh, if an imaginary axis is uh, constructed in a molecule and the molecule is rotated around that imaginary axis and to get a original orientation uh, number of times it has to be rotated that uh, and it gives the original orientation we say that possesses the rotation axis or proper rotation axis and the number of times you get the orientations that is the order of that axis then uh, you may write further what is the highest fold rotation axis or how to call it principal rotation axis in this way while giving your answer try to give the information uh, neat uh, properly mentioned and uh, uh, may be supported with diagram so that whomsoever assessing that can give you the marks the marks are divided as suppose for definition one mark is there for particular description remaining two marks are there for uh, diagram to support it one mark is there and conclusion of the question now conclusion of the question is important we have to see what is actually asked in the question what is actually asked in the question uh, see that is a typical uh, expectation is there in the question manje tya prashna cha kay tari rok asto kasha cha rokhane to prashna vicharla hai he aplya lakshat aale pahije ani tyacha proper uttar aplyala deta aale pahije so we have to conclude our answer in that way so any answer which you are giving descriptive answer may have three parts one is the uh, a short uh, introduction to that then a middle part is actual information which is asked and uh, uh, proof or the uh, evidences or support to that diagram or reaction and final is in two three sentences conclusion of that so in this way answers be written uh, so uh, a uh, time is very very short to explain all these things but i have tried to touch all the points if you have any question please ask me uh, we can discuss the things say students can ask question if they have any question hello a uh, students hello? students please ask your questions if, if you have question, any doubt any doubt please any doubt regarding examination any doubt regarding any topic please any topic please be, question paper or uh, anything you uh, have any doubt please ask me i'll explain that i'll answer that हॅलो सर प्रत्येक सेशन मध्ये मुलांचा एकच प्रश्न आहे की परीक्षा पोस्टपोन झाल्यात काय तर परीक्षा पोस्टपोन झालेली आहे हा त्या बाबतीत सांगतो की त्या होण्याची शक्यता आहे आता काय झालं सकाळीच आपण ती एक ऑनलाईन मिटिंग अटेंड केली त्याच्यामध्ये स्पष्ट असं कोणी सांगितलं जरी नसलं तरी त्यांना त्या बहुतेक कराव्या लागतील असं वाटत आहे कारण आता प्रॅक्टिकलचं अप्रूव्ह करून वगैरे आपण घेतोय ना त्याने थोडस पुढे जात आहे त्यामुळे कदाचित पुढे जाऊ शकतील पण ऑनरेबल कंट्रोलर ऑफ एक्झामिनेशन डायरेक्टर ऑफ एक्झामिनेशन तेही बोलले नाहीत 
आणि शक्यता मात्र आहे विद्यार्थ्यांना एक सूचना आहे की जरी परीक्षा पोस्टपॉन झाल्यात किंवा नाही झाल्यात तुम्ही असं ग्रहित धरूनच चला की आता परीक्षा हा आपल्या होणार आहे त्या आठ दिवसात होणार आहे किंवा पंधरा दिवसात होणार आहे तसं तुम्ही प्रिपेअर करा फायदा तुमचाच होईल पोस्टपॉन झाल्यानंतर कारण तुमचा अगोदर ताब्यात झालेला असेल बरोबर आहे कारण आपण जर पुढे जाणार आहेत म्हणून रिलॅक्स राहिलो तर वेळ ही वाया जाईल आणि कदाचित त्या कधीही ते लावू शकतील त्यामुळे मग परत तुम्हाला आणखी माइंड चेंज होईल तेव्हा बी इन दॅट मोटो दॅट वी आर गोईंग टू फेस द एक्झाम आणि आपण तयारी करतोय ती कंटिन्यू ठेवा आहे ते स्पिरिट तुमचं कंटिन्यू ठेवा आणि जस्ट प्रिपेअर फॉर मला क्वेश्चन पेपर विषयी कुठल्या विद्यार्थ्यांना काही शंका आहे का विचार हॅलो कारण आता पहिले चार क्वेश्चन चार युनिट वरती आणि एक कॉमन चार युनिट वरती शेवटचा याच्यामध्ये थोडा बहुत जरी बदल झाला तरी फारसा बदल होणार नाही पण असं नेचर राहील कारण अशा पद्धतीचं डिस्कशन नेहमीच एक्झामिनेशन मध्ये झालेलं आहे थँक्यू सर मला वाटतंय की मुलांचे काही प्रश्न नाही आणि मुलं पण थोडीशी कमीच आहेत रिस्पॉन्स कमी आहे होय का नाही वेळ जी आहे थोडस हे आणि आज कदाचित सुट्टीमुळे सुद्धा असू शकेल कामळे मॅडम तुमच्याकडे घ्या येस सर येस सर थँक्यू सो मच डॉक्टर गवाळे सर Uh, in a very okay. uh, gentle manner you started this session from syllabus and every each and every point uh, in the syllabus you discussed uh, and then uh, finally uh, about exam uh, the question paper pattern which is a big doubt uh, for uh, students because uh, two years they are uh, habitual to online paper so yes, that they also you cleared very nicely and uh, from your busy schedule actually sir uh, you are available today to uh, guide our students so thank you thank you very much sir on behalf of our sundara more arts commerce and science college thank you once welcome. again sir. welcome madam welcome i also extend my thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk to the students okay ma'am thank okay. you thank you sir okay. uh, madam mata meeting band karu ya mata yes sir yes sir okay okay